Good evening for everybody. I'm very glad to speak again here in Glasgow University. Uh, I'm Savas Mikhail Matzas, a revolutionary and a thinker, that's, as among millions of others. And uh, I had the privilege, by the way, to not only to fight before, during, and after the military dictatorship of Greece and in the current struggles, but as well to be the target of the Nazi <laughs> Golden Dawn organization, a criminal organization who killed a lot of people and remained unpunished. Now there is a trial of some of them, but this uh, gang had accused me quite ludicrously that I conspire to establish a Judeo-Bolshevik regime in Greece, combining their anti-Semitism because I'm of Jewish origin and my 40 years fight in, as a Marxist. Well, thanks to an international campaign of solidarity, they did not succeed. I won. We won in this fight. We remain in uh, targets of the Nazis. The problem, the scandal, it was not the Nazis themselves, what you expect from them. The, the scandal was why the bourgeois democratic state of Greece, its government, and the central right minister of justice of the Karamanlis government, of Samaras government at that time, in 2013, decided to accept this legal action against uh, us. This is the real scandal. And without the mobilization of the, again, of all the forces internationally, it should be impossible to win. Which says a lot about the tense class and political relations existing in Greece, particularly the last seven years because Greece was the weakened link, it became the broken link of the international and European and Eurozone chain. When the world capitalist crisis, which um, erupted in 2007, provoked an enormous crisis of uh, over indebtedness, over in debt crisis in Europe, and the unsustainable debt of Greece, has broken its backbone. Then the infam, infamous Troika, which means the European Union Commission, the European Central Bank, and the IMF came as saviors, a matter of fact, as a boosters of our people, welcomed by the then so-called socialist government of George Papandreou, later on by both the right wing and the PASOK, who ran the country from 1974 onwards, alternatively, after the fall of the military dictatorship until the moment of the crisis, until the moment of the bankruptcy, really, the default of Greece in uh, 2010. And uh, they imposed the most draconian measures of austerity that you can imagine, uh, which not only did not solve the crisis, but exacerbated it. We started to have a debt of 120% uh, uh, of the GDP. It is now 200%. It's growing. And it will be never paid, it's for sure. And, uh, but the, nevertheless, all these measures succeeded to create, to produce a fantastic humanitarian crisis that. Uh, at least in Greece, we never saw it before from the time of the Nazi occupation in the 40s. We have an employment, an employment which is bigger, greater than what happened in the United States in the Great Depression in the 30s. There it was, I think, 25% official numbers. To us, it is 26, 27. And uh, among the youth, is uh, devastating. I mean, all the youth group of the age from 18 to 24 years old, 63% of them 
are unemployed and without hope to find a job. They find part-time jobs here and there to work for one day per week with uh, under uh, really, it's not flexibility of labor, it's uh, nearly slave labor for a whole generation. But this generation has happened also in the Arab Spring, in Tunisia, Egypt, in other places, and also in Southern Europe, uh, is the vanguard of the fight. And also are liberated <laughs> in one sense, from the prejudice or the control of the bureaucratic apparatuses of the old traditional parties and the left, and uh, are open to new messages, to new agendas, for a radical social change in this hell in which we are. So we had, uh, starting from December 2008, just before the, on the eve of the official default, we had this youth revolt in all over Greece. It started in Athens, but for nearly two months it goes all over Greece after the killing of a young boy by the police and when we had the Karamanlis right-wing government at that time. The government could not control really the situation. It was really a vacuum of power. If you had an organized force capable to lead the masses, you could have a revolutionary change. But as in many other cases, the ruling classes uh, have a better understanding of the situation than the left or the official representatives of the people. So while the left either, in the case of the Communist Party, uh, condemned the, uh, this anarchist uh, revolt as an uh, operation organized by, orchestrated by the CIA, the Syriza was reluctantly either yes or no. Sometimes they went there, they say no to adventures. Even the extra parliamentary and the capitalist left did not, in its majority, intervene to that. My party intervened, so it was accused as an anarchist as well. We won the sympathy of the anarchists too, but the, we are we keep to be faithful to the need to build the party and then international to make the socialist revolution and to the best traditions of the October socialist revolution in 1917. But the ruling class understood well what happened and what was coming. Dominique Strauss-Kahn, who was the head then of the IMF, described this December revolt as the first political explo explosion, is the first political explosion of the current world economic crisis. It happened just two months after the collapse of the Lehman Brothers. So it was the first, the prelude for the a storm engulfing not only Greece and Europe, but the whole world after 2007-2008. And then when it was declared openly the default of Greece, and the uh, Troika imposed its infamous, infamous memorandum of understanding linked to the so-called bailout. Uh, you had popular mobilization, which sometimes took an insurrectionary form for year, the years. The old political parliamentary system based in the alternation of the two parties, PASOK and New Democracy, which ran, as I told, from 1974 onwards until uh, 2012, collapsed. So from uh, 2002, PASOK, who used to have 48%, uh, something like that, of the vote, uh, today in the last, in the September uh, 2015, had 6%. And uh, was crushed as well in the June, in the May and June 2012 elections. The same happened to the right wing. The official, the New Democracy Party, which ran the country for decades. On the contrary, a small left reformist party like uh, Syriza was catapulted first in the position of the official opposition in 2012, and then to the government in the elections of September, uh, December. Sorry, January 25, 2015. Which uh, we have to understand what uh, in the Greek context, it wasn't 
not the, uh, that the left party came to power, to government, their power. It's not the same in Greece as in other countries of Western Europe, France, Italy, or even here the Labour Party governments, that a party who claims to be to the left comes, is able to form after elections a government. Greece had passed through the historical trauma of the civil war of the 40s, which really was a revolution, first against the Nazi occupation, then against the British imperialism and the American imperialism and the local Greek bourgeoisie and was, was defeated thanks to the betrayal of Kremlin in collaboration with Churchill and, uh, and the American imperialists. So we had uh, decades then of concentration camps, of uh, executions, etc. A very, and then the dictatorship, as you know, in, from 67 to 74, a rather short period of bourgeois democracy from 74 until uh, recently, and uh, then, this enormous regime crisis produced uh, by the economic crisis. So, even just one week before the elections of May 2012, the polls have given to Syriza just 10% uh, of the vote. The big change came, not only because we know that the polls always are wrong, <laughs> period taken in Britain itself, in the Turkey, in the, uh, recently, in Greece as well. But uh, I think that the most important factor is because in the last week, not in the previous electoral campaign, the Syriza launched the slogan for a government of the left, which shock, have, it was a big political shock, the trigger of the movement, because the people said, okay, all the other parties were crooks, are uh, terrible, they led the country to this, uh, this disaster. So let's try the left. Never mind if they are communists, because for, in Greece, if you are left, you mean you are communists, okay? There is no distinction because of the tradition of the country. So they let, that does not mean the majority of the Greek people became communists. The, the thing was they wanted an end to austerity. And to have it, they were ready to promote a left-wing government a government of the left, a government of the defeated of the civil war against the victors of the war and such war. This was the historical content. At the same time, of course, the same social polarization produced the rise of the Nazis, which were the Golden Dome was a marginal group, extra-parliamentary group of zero point something percent and it became 8%. Still, until now, from now on, it is the third bourgeois party in parliament, keeping its uh, strength despite the murders, despite the xenophobic attacks against the immigrants, against uh, the killings, against uh, stormtroopers they have. They but they have the protection of not only just the deep state, of the state. Officially, 50, more than 50% of the riot police force voted votes for the Golden Dawn, for the Nazis. Never mind the army itself, with its long history of coups, etc. But the major uh, uh, event, it was the turning to the left of the majority of the Greek people. And then never return back to the right, by the way. Many governments were overthrown by this turning of the left. First, the Paso government, Papandreou government, the Samaras Venizelos government, bef between them a national unity government under Papadimos, who was uh, vice chairman of the European Central Bank and the uh, official of the Goldman Sachs, of course. And uh, the mass movement brought down them and then bring to power citizens, generally hoping that it will be an end to austerity, or at, at least an improvement of the social conditions. But uh, followed, as you know, seven months of ne fruitless negotiations. And, uh, but from the beginning, it was clear that it was class war. I mean, 25 of January, we had the elections. 4 of February, the European Central Bank, under the order of Draghi, cut the liquidity to the bankrupt Greek banking system, the ELA. 
So during all the seven months, the situation it was the following. I can summarize it and explaining it from a point of view why Syriza failed and capitulated at the end. It was because he, they looked from the beginning, as they said, a honest compromise, both with the Greek ruling class and the Troika. They asked for a class compromise and class peace in conditions of class war, declared class war, both by the European Union, the European Central Bank, the IMF, the Greek ship owners who never pays, pay taxes, as you know, and, and uh, bankers, industrialists, you name it. And during the period even of the preparation for the elections and afterwards, the Syriza leadership gave one concession after another to the Greek bourgeoisie, first of all, including to form the, their own government in alliance with the right-wing nationalist party, the independent Greeks, xenophobic, homophobic, tied to the church, uh, against the immigrants, you name it, racist, obscurant. <laughs> this is the ally of the first government of the left in Greece. It still is, after the new elections. At the same time, they proposed as a president of the Republic, a leading member of the Greek right, Prokopis Pavlopoulos, who was the, the home minister, the minister of interior during the December revolt. <laughs> so, and who was very active in June, July this year, together with the Troika to impose the new memorandum of the government who put it, him in this place. So we had a capitulation. There, there's no doubt. And, uh, and, and a capitulation just a few, no, the, nearly one day after a fantastic victory, the referendum of 5th of July, mm -hmm. which is a major event because it came just in a week where all the banks were closed by the order and the pressure of the ECB. You had the queues of pensioners, old pensioners, trying to get 60 euros that they were allowed to take from the ATMs. The, all the media was for the yes to the European Union uh, ultimatum. All the parties, they organized uh, right-wing reactionary rallies in the Sindagma Square. They did, you cannot imagine the pressure. From the other side, the side of the no, it was silence. Tsipras himself and the leaders of Syriza, they hoped that they would lose, they lose. Or if they win, they win with a slight difference from the yes. So they allowed them to have a space of maneuver with the Troika. No, nobody, until Friday, in my view, Friday, one, two days before the referendum, the 3rd of July, when you had one million people, most of them young, flew in all, all Athens. I mean, if, I don't know if you've ever been in Athens, but from, to go from the platform of the metro station in Sidagma Square outside takes five minutes maximum. For me, it took one hour to go out to find my comrades and the banner of the party to be there. One hour, it was, <coughs> it was asphyxiating, you could not breathe. So many people, and 80% young. That was, uh, because they speak about the depoliticized youth, 80% were young. Keep in mind also that 100,000 new voters voted in July, and these were young people who had no the right in January. And the same night of the victory, on the 5th of the July, then 62% of the people, and against all the odds, won, voted no to the ultimatum, Tsipras capitulated. Varoufakis explained, he made public what happened, that he went, when the people was dancing in Sindagma Square, drinking, dancing, singing, etc., he went to the palace, of the Prime Minister and everybody was crying. They did not want it, the victory. And Tsipras in the same night called the, 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 the leaders of the defeated parties of the right and the PASOK and the others to have a common agreement and with this common agreement to go to the Troika. And of course Troika tortured him until the end. 
Shoeb le put the thing, if you don't sign, you will be out from the Eurozone immediately. Until that moment, the French and the Italians, Hollande and Renzi, etc., were on the same side of the German government, despite all the, what they expected from Syriza, until the question of the Grexit, very well, uh, the French understood, which, because the Euro it was their own project, okay, from the beginning, that will be the beginning of the end of the Eurozone, probably of the European Union project as a whole. So they were not in agreement. At that moment, Obama intervened. It's also in 2012, in the previous Eurozone crisis, and uh, called on the phone. Tsipras say, look, you are right. The Germans are completely crazy to propose that. We will persuade the French to help you. So sign anything now, and later on, we'll have a debt relief, something better for you. Yeah, he signed, capitulated completely which was an enormous shock to the Greek people. They split the series, as you know, it split, others left. And uh, despite the fact that the majority of the then Central Committee of series voted against the third memorandum, uh, he ignored completely Tsipras. And uh, when he saw the difficulties, he called snap elections. The thing is, he won. Why he won? Why the forces on the left of Syria did not won or did not even enter to the parliament? I mean, the so-called left wing of Syria, which split in August and formed the Popular Unity Party, did not manage even to enter the parliament, despite they had the most popular leaders you can imagine. I mean, uh, including this lady who was the chairperson of the uh, parliament, Zoe Kosadopoulou who had founded uh, Truth Committee for the Dead, etc. is very popular uh, to the people, but very hated by all the bourgeoisie. Okay? But uh, even her, for her, it was impossible. They did not went. We, the EC, made an electoral block with Andersia, which is a coalition of anti-capitalist uh, left organizations keeping each of us its political independence, but make a block. Because Andersia itself split. While Syriza split from the left in one, if you, you see from one vantage point, because those who was against the capitulation left. In Andersia, which uh, is, was a coalition of all the other forces of the anti-capitalist left, there was another split from the right, because a group of them joined the, the popular unity. Why I call it a split from the right? And why the popular unity, as a matter of fact, uh, failed? Despite all the odds <laughs> so that it will be at least be in parliament as an opposition force. It is because the only program that that the uh, popular unity proposed, it was to be a new old Syriza, more consistent, to follow the same line, but consistently. And uh, in uh, some point, if it is necessary to turn, uh, to break from the Euro, and go back to the drachma, the national currency, which was a trap for them, because it was used both by the European Union and by the Syriza leadership against them. The dilemma, Euro or Drachma, is a pseudo-dilemma. Many uh, uh, can explain, because the Greek people hate, hates the European Union, hates the IMF, because nobody is blind and does not see who is responsible for all the sufferings of the last five years. But at the same time, fears the known that economic and political isolation while you keep the same capitalist framework, in a bankrupt capitalist Greece, which will be obliged to pay in euros or dollars in the foreign sphere, and internally to pay in drachmas, in an underdevaluated drachma, ultra inflationary, the wages, what wages, and what pensions, after five years of a massacre of pensions and wages, and such an employment. 
No, this platform, which is economic nationalism in a sense, you cannot have neither socialism in a single country nor capitalism in a single country in conditions of capitalist globalization. So they were defeated. On the contrary, the lists of the anti capitalist left, he was the only one who, which has grown in number of votes without bre breaking the limitations okay, of the marginal position they had. But for example, in, uh, there was a jump of uh, quite important. We had, as I said before, uh, 45,000 votes, while uh, in January, that we had much less. Now we, there was a promising thing, I mean, because the, the forces of the revolutionary left are not, are electorally, if you like, marginalized, but not socially. They have a base in unions. They have a base in social movements of all kinds. And because all, during all of that period as well, of the five, six years of the crisis, many grassroots forms of self-organization of the workers and the peoples emerged. People's assemblies in the working class and popular neighborhoods. Or uh, we have forms of resistance to the social catastrophe. For example, free health care units where doctors and nurses and person, medical personnel uh, try to give free help, uh, care to the people because the National Health Service is in, uh, has collapsed, thanks to the Troika. Or even education, or other things. And uh, oh, of course, we have also anti-fascist initiatives to fight against the stormtroopers. A different forms of that, which sometimes emerge more strong than subside. And uh, the main point it is that I want to stress it is the potential of social resistance of the last years has not been broken despite the capitulation of Syriza last July. How we explain its new victory in the elections? It's quite easy. If you think about it, and not in the usual parliamentary creativist way, it is the following. The Greek people does not want to go back to regress. For this reason, the right wing was defeated. And now it's in a deep crisis, in this integration card. The four different forces are fighting each other now because a new leadership has to be elected at the end of this month. And the, the PASOK is smashed, the others, uh, all the bourgeois parties are in crisis, the other parties. So the Greek people have said, the Greek workers, and then employed the youth particularly, to go back, no, no way. To go forward, I don't see an alternative for the time being. So we vote for the lesser evil, and they voted for Syriza. Without that means that they have the same hopes, the same expectations, the same trust they used to have in the past. They passed through this experience and they look around and there are all kinds of political debates now which are going on, which are very important. And last but not least, the day after tomorrow we have a general strike in Greece. But we had 30 general strikes during the crisis, okay? But because of the bureaucracy, the union bureaucracy, it was a 24 hours general strike, so the maximum 48 eight hours. And uh, of course, with one day protest, you cannot win. Uh, the, there are two differences. This time, it, was, it is again, the government, it is, a right, it is a, not a right wing or a PASO government, it is the government just elected of the left. One. The, the target of the strike is uh, double. It is the two first measures that the uh, Troika, now it, it's not even Troika, it's Quartet, we call it, because apart the three that you said, it, the fourth is the ESM, the European Stability, uh, UM, stability Mechanism, who gives most of the part of the loan of 86 billion euros. So, uh, the, the first reason, goal of this strike action, it is to fight against the pension cuts, new pension cuts, and the, the abolition of pension rights, as it was until now. 
The second, a very important uh, reason to strike on the day after tomorrow, it is the threat of eviction from their houses of thousands of families. Because in the name of the recapitalization of the banks, which are bankrupt, to give the loan for this recapitalization, etc., the banks have to, do, to, to deal with the so-called non-performing loans. And the biggest part of them, apart from small enterprises, etc., are uh, poor people who mortgage, with a mortgage, they paid, they had a home, but then because of the crisis, they lost the job, they could not pay. So they will be evicted. So even Tsipras and his leadership now understand that it's a bomb if they do that. Keep in mind that even Podemos, despite all the criticism I can have, for the, emerged as a movement out of the movement against the eviction of houses in Spain. In Greece it will be worse because now, despite the poverty, the dream always of a Greek worker is to have a flat, to never be under the slavery of a rent to pay. And the, th the last 30 years, they have 80% of the workers in the Athens and Piraeus region, where 40, more than 40% of the population lives, have a small flat. So they will lose it with this bloody thing. So it is a suicide for the government to go that. That creates an enormous, probably you read even the British press today, in the Financial Times, in the Guardian, I saw it. Yesterday there was a crisis between the Eurozone and the Greek government, like in July. With the Dice Bloom, the chairman of the Eurogroup, pushing, saying that the Greeks do nothing, etc. So you don't, we don't give you two billion, which is the first installment of the loan, if you don't pass the, the measure of a, to evict, for, for eviction. So the, it is very tense, the situation. We have a general strike in two days. The proposal for this general strike started uh, for in the other day, other day is the National Federation of Civil Servants, I mean, those who are working in the public sector in Greece. And the, the initial proposal was a proposal of the trade union faction of us, I mean, not only of us of the revolutionary left faction. We have a common front in the unions, and uh, which call uh, left recruitment, etc. So we, in uh, our proposal was for an indefinite general strike until these laws are uh, abolished. So the, the bureaucracy were paralyzed, they don't want it. Then came the Communist Party, say, let us make it one day strike for the same, say, then all the bureaucrats accepted it. From the series of trade unionists to the right wing, all they voted, so we go to a general strike against the will, I mean, of the bureaucracy, in matter of fact. And uh, nobody who knows, because already at least two unions, or federations, the P PNO, PNO is the federation of the sea sailors, huh? the, uh, the navy, the sailors very important in Greece. They are for an indefinite strike. And uh, as well, the OTA is the, the workers in local government, which means the, the, you know, who, the cleaners of the street, the, the, all, not just the employees in town halls, it is a very important job. And already they started also occupying they are occupations of town halls, etc., by these workers, and they want to go beyond the one-day general strike. So these are one part which shows the potential that we are not defeated. They, uh, the, 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 the government of Syria accepted to capitulate, the Greek people never. This is not my spirit only, I mean, okay. We have to expect a lot of surprises from this corner of Europe. Plus, another thing which is very important, and I will finish here <laughs> to have a discussion, it is to see, it is not a question just of solidarity, but something more. You have a devastated country. You have people, at least 30,000 people without shelter, homeless, in Athens. 
and employment, you name it. I mean, uh, my mother-in-law who just died, she had a pension of uh, 250 euros. I mean, uh, less, 180 pounds, something. It's, uh, you cannot survive. That's a monthly. Yeah, yeah, monthly, yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, survive. In the, uh, despite this, despite the humanitarian catastrophe that you are within, you have this wave of the migrants crisis from Syria, Afghanistan, etc. Only in two months, we had uh, 300,000 coming to the Greek islands, and many of them drowned in the Aegean Sea, okay? Kids, etc. You see the island pictures everywhere. So, <coughs> and you know this hypocritical, disgusting discussion in the European Union, in the fortress Europe, where to put 150,000, 200,000, this country, only this country will take, even Britain who is very humanitarian, they will take 20,000, I don't remember how many. Still in Calais, they are waiting to come in many. So there is this, and the right, far right, and the, the, the fascists, they try to create. In Greece, the same, okay, the Golden Dawn went to the islands this summer. And they tried to incite. They did not say only they, take, they come to take our jobs because everybody knows that our jobs were taken by the Troika, but in the Greek government. Uh, but they say, okay, they will spread epidemics. The third world uh, things, we are Europeans. Then, or they, they, they are jihadists who pretend to be, and they come in for that. The third are agents of Turkey, okay, the nationalist thing, who come to occupy Greece who undermine Greece, they failed. And uh, <laughs> not only, even myself, I was astonished the level of solidarity from the poor of the poor. <laughs> Which shows that the potential of social resistance is not crushed. It's not a question of philanthropy, of humanism, etc. It's something very deep. Because this migrant crisis is not the same as in the past, okay? Many, many aspects. It is the nemesis, if you use the ancient Greek tragedy, tradition of the hubris of imperialism after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the wars in Central Asia, in uh, Middle East, or then the attack against the Arab Revolutionary Movement through the spring, the so-called spring, in Tunisia and Egypt. Libya, Syria, etc., or the ISIS are product of imperialist barbarism. All these millions in Asia, Middle East, Africa, coming to the fortress Europe is really the revenge of history. And the, now they are coming not in a Europe in ex industrial expansion, but in recession. And even today, the OECD, by the way, even, they say that the next year will be far the slowdown of the global economy. And uh, Europe, which is the most vulnerable after all these years, will feel the effect. So we enter in a period of, no, the period of convulsions is not only finished, ended, but not only in Greece, all over Europe will have. The thing it is we have to elaborate an alternative strategy of way out from this impasse. And at least at some programmatic points, many of us in the revolutionary left, we agree, first of all, the abolition of debt. Without the abolition of debt, you cannot abolish austerity. Okay, it is a vicious circle. Austerity and the debt are used not just as economic policies, but as a political method of control of impoverished populations, to atomize them, to crush any resistance. They knew in July, not, do not mention before, Schäuble company, that this third memorandum that Tsipras has signed is, cannot be uh, uh, sustainable. It's not sustainable economically, socially, politically. It's impossible to fulfill this program. You are just in the first measure, okay, with the houses problem. So they know that, but they want to crush not just Tsipras and his government, the Greek people as example for what will happen to all the other European peoples, from the south to the north, 
to the west, to the east. This is what happens. We enter the period of storms, and for me, in a pre-revolutionary period, not just in Greece, but all over Europe. So we have to forge international links, real internationalism, not in words, but in practice, in action. And uh, without a sectarian prere uh, prerequisite, you are this or that, from which political tradition are you coming? Because I was really a bit sickened uh, coming, not only here, but also in France, in other places, seeing all these so-called far-left groups fighting each other in a, in a warfare useless. They don't understand the suffering of the people. They just want to prove their point. Who cares about their point? Somebody yesterday asked me what you did in 1985 when the WRP has collapsed. Who cares about that? The, the jobless in the, or the, 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 the migrant who, is, who lost his family in the AGN. We have to have a program. This program can be only international socialism. A socialist unification of Europe from Lisbon to Vladivostok. This is the only way out. Thank you. Next. That was a very magisterial summary of the situation and analysis of its causes. Thank you. Um, questions? Well, you mentioned Vladivostok. Uh, would it be fair to say that there hasn't been a great deal of evidence of working people, even in the South European area, uh, showing solidarity of the kind that one might have expected, and also confronting austerity? You know, mm -hmm. taking, you know, taking the, the fight uh, further. I Is that disappointing to you, or what do you expect? We will take all the, or I uh, reply to every question, or we take some of them, and as you like. I mean, I can reply to that. It's, it's very entirely, important. It's entirely up to you how you would like Okay, to no, it, I can, uh, can start. Uh, I think it's a very important point. The uneveness of uh, the development of social struggles in Europe, to speak for a real, material, realistic basis for international solidarity, etc. I think uh, things are, there are subterranean currents before, behind the surface of the events, that uh, the surface political life as it is now, that. Uh, prepare us many surprises and thanks God to our enemies. In which sense? I think that the workers or the unemployed or the poor or the pauperized people, not only in Southern Europe, but including here, they look to Greece and we look to them as we look. They, maybe they are not, they did not mobilize yet, but you have all kinds of contradictory phenomena in Europe. No, in, uh, in uh, Spain you had uh, mass movements, okay? And uh, there are fear, or you have Catalonia, you have um, uh, other aspects. Or even, I dare, without knowing well the situation in your country here, even the Jeremy Corbyn surprise <laughs> last summer, it, that shows that things are not so you, we have to make, as Marx says, the distinction between appearances and essence, what happens behind. And what drives the essence are contradictions. Contradictions of the system, of the capitalist system, which have exploded. I see, I mean, Larry Summers, the former, you know, the former Clintons, I think it was, uh, finance minister, and uh, well known in every aspect, he called Greece to be Europe's failed state in waiting. <laughs> but Europe, sorry. he said that Greece is a European state, a failed uh, Europe's uh, failed state in waiting to be declared a failed state like Libya, like Syria, you name it. But this is a geopolitical black hole in Europe, which is quite different. What the destabilizing factor for the whole Europe 
Because keeping in mind the Lenin's metaphor, it is not a link who has been broken, it is a chain who has been broken. It cannot be repaired. Why? First, the link cannot be repaired and sustainable debt. How you can repair the Greek link one. The Eurozone cannot be the same as before the Greek crisis, never. Even yesterday's events prove again that. Third, there will be a new phase of the world capitalist crisis. The IMF, the OECD, everybody says that, not me. The coming months and year, particularly if the Fed decides to raise the rate, the rates in December session, hitting the BRICS and other countries. So Europe will be again in turbulence. You think that, uh, I don't think that uh, those who already felt the uh, first blows of the previous phase of the crisis will remain the same. I don't know where, and nobody is an astrologist to predict where it will explode, which form it will take. But nevertheless, all the factors show that there is no possibility of any restabilization short term or mid term of the situation in Greece, in Europe and internationally. I don't believe that there will be a linear development of this international unity, solidarity, you name it, from Lisbon to Vladivostok. It will be no. For the moment the Balkans are completely destabilized and every government in the Balkans now try to kill the other to send the migrants to the others. I mean, there is a fight between the Croats, the Serbs, the, the Hungarian of Ur Urban in the north. Everybody don't want the migrants. And they put, they, they are, there is an enormous tension, but at the same time, nothing is the same in the Balkans as before. The government fell and the president left in Moldavia, in Romania, Montenegro, there is a problem. Even in Albania, there was a mass movement last week. Of course, the mainstream press and the TV never report all this stuff. You have to have contacts, other sources, alternative sources of information, to have, all, thanks to the internet, the internet help. I, I am not a fetishist of the internet. I am against those who try to explain the Arab revolts through the internet, etc. It helps, but that's, that's more or less during the the first uh, weeks of the revolution against Mubarak in uh, Egypt, it was not, um, the internet was shut down. Nevertheless, you had the revolutionary mobilization, which was lost for the moment because of the left and the mistakes. I don't say that there will be an even linear development towards solidarity, internationalism, etc., against a common enemy. The, not only the ruling classes, but the parties, uh, including the parties of the left, will do everything to divide us. If I could just add one word, if you're right. If yeah. You haven't said anything about the hegemonic power, about Germany. Um, okay. You could argue that the working class in Germany, where unemployment, I think, is 3 or 4%, uh, people have a very secure and standard objectively gain from the relationship that they have to the Europe and to the, you know, the subordination of the Southern European countries, the sort of aristocracy of labour, if you'd like to use that, that argument, couldn't you? Yes, of course. I agree with you that the Germany, the social situation is very different from what is in the South. If you take it, even the Northern Europe is different than what is in the South, in the peripheral, so-called peripheral Europe. But particularly, in Germany is the centre is the engine, as they say, of the European economy. But the strong aspect of Germany is its weakest or as well. It is its Achilles heel. It's an industrial country with, with an export economy. And it could they have the surpluses, etc., thanks to the deficits in the South first, and thanks to the expansion of uh, German cars and others in uh, China, for example, or in Russia, where you had 6,200 German enterprises uh, investing their interests there before the Ukrainian events and the sanctions, and they have problems. So the Ger Germany does want a solution with Russia against the American line in relation to Ukraine. So 
plus everybody thought until uh, two months that the strongest leader in the European Union, if not in the world, is Angela Merkel, Muti, the little mother of the German people, that the, we, who, by the way, she appears much more human in relation to the migrant crisis than many others. That's true, and they, I, I share the hatred that the Greeks we have around the, uh, Angela Merkel. But anyway, Angela Merkel had this line. You know very well that uh, the CSU the, in the south is against, and they want even to close the borders of Germany, their side, to any migrant uh, movement. Second, there are in other parts in federal Germany that the federation, I mean the local sections of the CDU itself takes decisions ag again the central leadership of the CDU. The SPD, is pr which is the partner, is also in trouble. There is a political crisis produced particularly by the migrant crisis, which cannot be underestimated, one. Second, you cannot underestimate, no, the first it was that the deepening of the world recession, or slowdown or depression, you name it, that even the capitalist institution agree that it will happen, will hit Germany particularly, because of it's a, an economy based on exports, etc. This is the one. The second, it is the migrant crisis. Third, it is the condition in the, all the satellites of Berlin <coughs> in Central Eastern Europe, because of the migrant crisis, are against Muti, against America. Hungary, Czech Republic, Slovakia, even Poland, who just elected the most far right person you can imagine in the last elections. So I am not, I see crisis coming to Germany. And Germany is not only the country of uh, Hitler. No, Hitler was an Austrian, by the way. But the Austrians could persuade us that Hitler was a German and Beethoven was an Austrian, the other way around. But I have, yes, I know that the situation in Europe depends, as in 1917, what will happen at the end in Germany. But I'm optimistic, possibly because I come also from a generation, I was in Berlin when Rudi Duschke marched there together with Ernst Bloch, and I share their Prinzip Hoffnung, their hope principle. Okay, sorry. Um, I was actually just going to follow up on, on that point. That in my, my monitoring of spices, it, it engine increase, um, it perplexes me um, that the German working class and middle class feel that they do have something to gain from the subordination of Greece. It seems to me that they have nothing at all to gain by this. Mm -hmm. If anything, they have much more to lose. Because if you're looking at it from a strictly capitalist perspective, um, that is a market. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're right, from the EU export market, that's, that's a market they no longer have if Greece uh, continues uh, to, uh, to be as, uh, or remains as impoverished as it is. Um, and uh, as far as uh, a Greek exit threatening, further dissolution of the euro, that's just not going to happen, because the euro is nothing more than the mark. Uh, I mean, the mark is what sustains the euro. Mm -hmm. uh, so the exit of Greece from, from, from the euro, I just don't see how that uh, in any way threatens uh, the currency itself. Um, so this whole thing from the very beginning um, strikes me as being Angela Merkel. Um, as, as Angela Merkel being true, uh, to her own conservative mm -hmm. agenda, um, you know, which is to pursue this um, strictly ideological based policy um, of austerity that has no merits economically. I mean, there's no proof that this actually works. For anyone, for anyone. So, yeah, that's what it, I think that a lot of people in Germany have been convinced that. This is a policy that's uh, somehow going to uh, help them keep what they have. Mm -hmm. um, 
Whereas, you know, it seems to, be, you know, it seems to me that it's not, if anything, they're a net loser. Um, why that argument hasn't, or that, I should say that, that kind of argument hasn't been put forward, or at least I haven't seen it put forward, as strongly as it should be, I don't know, but, um, yeah, I mean, this just, it's not a, um, it's not a net loss uh, for anyone in the working class in Germany, and it, if I were someone, if I were a German and I was sort of working on a trade or some other kind of uh, blue collar on America industry, um, I would be thinking, well, you know, if anything, this is a market that, you know, uh, the collapse of which could perhaps affect my job. Um, so I think we should have a second look at what we are asking or what we're demanding that the Greek people do, how much we you know, demand that they give up really, of, their, of their life. I mean, this, this has gone now beyond life, but to the actual life. <laughs> um, before we were to so, That's not the question, it's a comment. Okay. I can comment on the comment, but if somebody... Do you want to respond to that now, or later? I can respond. Actually, I, mean, I have no problem. Do, but uh, I prefer that uh, a number of other friends here, if you want also to contribute and uh, respond to that. If you want to uh, respond now, okay. Well, I Look, I, I think that, again, to develop more and more argument that Germany is in trouble, in a big trouble. Not only for the reasons that I said before, but uh, all the centrifugal forces in Europe work in the medium and long term against the German capitalist interests. Berlin does not face only the crazy Greek people and their habits. It cannot only threaten us with the Brexit, it has to face Brexit as well, quite soon. And what there are the centrifugal forces in all the European edifices as it was formed the last decades are clear to seen even by a German commentator, a liberal one, and that he cannot be to have any suspicion that he's a Trotskyist. I mean Wolfgang Munchau and his remark in the Financial Times in last week, I think it was his comment that he warned that the European Union faced the real danger, I quote, to wither away and turn into a ghost. Mm -hmm. So the ordo liberalismus, as the German version of neoliberalism, and applied after the war, mm -hmm. uh, in the conditions of a divided Germany of Cold War, against the Soviet Union, etc., the whole conditions which permitted a limit for a limited period ordo liberalism to work in West Germany does not mean that it can work, have the same results in the completely changed European and world environment in the post-Cold War, if, if you like, also in the post-post-Cold War period in which we are. I mean, after Ukraine and all this stuff. We are in a, a whole period after the post-Cold War, it's, as we knew it, as the capitalist class thought it, as an end of history in the 90s, it turned to a nightmare for them and for Germany. And Germany has unresolved the historical problems. Even Hitler wanted to make it a, power, a European power quite big, knowing that it cannot be a world power, a global power. Cannot replace America in this sense. If they know better than me, the German ruling class, this truth. They try to win time and move. How the working class in uh, Germany will uh, resist 
I, I am not an astrologist to say <laughs> then that, but, and it is not out of any metaphysical confidence I have to the nature of the working class that makes me. First, I see the impasse, the dead end of the system. Second, the strategic impasse of the ruling classes. They had in the last uh, century until now, I mean, only in the imperialist epoch, as old Leninists, I can repeat the term, the epoch of capitalist decline, two economic strategies, Keynesianism, if you like, they, from the New Deal onwards, after the Second World, the Bretton Woods framework, etc. And when this collapsed in the liberalism, they turned back to the 19th century, the fair capitalism, which is a dystopia, a utopia, it's impossible to go back to the womb of your mother. So, and that failed. I mean, what is the nature of the crisis in 2007-2008 started then, if not the whole strategy of the last 30 years after the collapse of the post-war uh, relative expansion and the crisis was the domination of finance capital, etc., led to the implosion of global financial capital. And they did not supersede that now. So in Europe, this is a dialectic of the thing, the strongest country, the strongest ruling class, and the strongest economy has a more to lose. For this reason, there are, in my view, the politics by Schäuble are politics of despair. He is the person who chaired the unification of Germany, of the, what is the name of the enterprise? who privatized all the state enterprises in the DDR, in the East Germany. Yeah. That's right. Fine. And he proposed the same to Greece, okay, last July. The, and the, that the same enterprise has the control of the whole privatizations of Greece. So, I don't know if Varoufakis is right that from all the people that he met in Brussels or in other countries, the Troika, only Schäuble had he has respect for Schäuble, I don't understand well the way. But in fact, anyway, he's an erratic Marxist, like he says, so. But anyway, I think strategies and policies that worked after the war under Strauss, for example, the order liberalism under Strauss, or in the previous period, cannot work now. Don't you remember that the euro was accepted by the Germans and to leave the Deutschmark uh, because, to, because in the beginning Thatcher and Mitterrand was against the reunification of Germany. So the euro itself is the product of this, of this bargaining of the bourgeois elites in Europe for the future in the post-Cold War period, how, what to do well, for the expansion in, Eastern, in the form of Soviet space, if you like, even more, and in the new conditions to compete with America, etc. And what we live now, and this is a lesson from Greece, it is the collapse of this project. The euro is not just the euro, it's not just a monetary policy. It was a political strategy for this expansion. And what do you have in this expansion? You have Ukraine, you have this chaos now in the Central Europe, in the Balkan Europe as well. You have this, <laughs> this mess that some sections or even of the German bourgeoisie, I think they, they see it. So the market and the market economy has reached its historical limits. I don't believe to an automatic collapse okay, of the system, but I think the limits are to all of us to see. It's, uh, and uh, the prospect of barbarism is quite here. The thing it is, uh, I don't believe neither to a barbarism with a human face like that that Tsipras proposed to the Greeks now. That, okay, we accept this Dragonian austerity, but we try to change this and that. There are, we, I know that I speak in the, I don't know, in Scotland, but in Britain, it's the land of the gradualism and of the gradual changes. There will be gradual changes as well. There will be continuities. Mm -hmm. But the dominant factor of the next period is discontinuities, break of, breaks of the continuities, leaps or regressions. That doesn't mean leaps only forward, okay, progressive. 
events. We are in uncharted waters, which are in a tempest. But always I looked tempest through the eyes of Prospero. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Well, I wonder if I could ask you a question. I'm, I'm, um, Tasia, and Tasia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, stands for um, exit from the Eurozone, uh, mm -hmm. abandonment, obviously, with that of the Euro, okay. uh, asking for the default of the debt. Um, uh, Nationalization without compensation of major industries, um, banning of unemployment, and so on. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, this clearly is an alternative to the route that Cyprus has decided to take. Mm -hmm. um, but if I understand you from your talk, you are saying that um, a country like Greece doing that on its own would not be able to survive because okay. of the nature of the global capitalist economy, of the mounting of contradictions. Okay, yes, yeah. And you, in particular, you refer to the real danger of adopting the drachma again and then having inflation. So uh, am I right in saying that you're fairly pessimistic in terms of not at all. Uh, okay, I will try of, of the immediate uh, possibilities for Greece to get out of the present okay. situation it finds itself in? First of all, I follow, you know, somebody, I think a French philosopher said, every philosopher has his own or her own philosophy plus the philosophy of Spinoza. So for me, Spinoza's dictum that uh, Trotsky liked very much, no reader and non luger and equity the star, he said in the ligure, not cry, uh, non uh, laugh, not uh, cry, not revolt, but understand is very important. Mm -hmm. To and, uh, uh, yes, to, yeah. to understand, intelligere, which is more than understand, this reasoning, okay, thinking about what happens. Mm -hmm. So if we see that, I mean, there is a long discussion we had with the leading, particularly the leading force in Andalusia, part of, from, it, it is NAR. NAR is the new left current, which broke from the Communist Party in 1989. And we had a long, long political relationship with them, uh, uh, we are uh, brothers and enemies at the same time, <laughs> but we are very close. We know each other very much because we were united in the period uh, where uh, both the actual existing socialism collapsed, the so-called ICFI, that period had collapsed. So the left wing of the Communist Party, the left wing in my party, we were allies from this period. So we have a long discussion about it. We are on the program is, as you said before, okay, the, uh, and this we discuss every, every time. Say, how we distinguish, and this was one of the reasons for the block of last September, in the discussion with them. Say, okay, a break with the, from the imperialist European Union, which involves, of course, the exit from the Eurozone, if you break, say you don't pay, you know, and as a the bank, you have nothing to take from us, <laughs> they don't allow you to be there. In any sense, it is a decision to break. It is a necessary for us condition, but not sufficient. It needs to be to have complemented with other, with an internationalist uh, perspective. We have to distinguish ourselves from, for example, from the Popular Unity program, elaborated particularly by Kostas Slapavitsas, who is professor in SOAS in London. Yeah, yeah, so, and uh, who said, uh, I mean, uh, Costas La, uh, La Pavita says clearly that uh, Marx is good for the long run perspective, mm -hmm. but for immediately it is Keynesianism, the only solution. Mm -hmm. So he said that he, his analysis says that the Greek crisis is a crisis of competitiveness. 
So if we return back to the drachma, the Greek economy will become more competitive and we move forward, <coughs> plus other measures he proposes. But it is central to him also the return to the drachma to overcome the competitiveness gap. Of course, the crisis is not a crisis of competitiveness because a bit it is the negative uh, version of the same logic as the Troika. The Troika tries through an internal devaluation, because we are in the euro, by cutting the labor costs, etc., to make us more competitive, as Schäuble says. The, to make, uh, not an internal, but to go back to a hyper hyperinflationary drachma, in the same capitalist framework, what do we say with the comrades? In, in the, we agreed in a common at the end, otherwise we could not have a block in September. That they will say that uh, you cannot, uh, this break from the European Union and the exit, uh, et cetera, et cetera, has, cannot be done. We have to break the capitalist framework, one. And uh, how soon or later the other comrades, the other workers of the Europe will help us, we hope that uh, it will be the trigger revolutionary overthrow in Greece that the others, but both now, it is clearly stated that in our agreement with the comrades from uh, Andersia after the split of the others. Mm -hmm. The others are uh, two Althusserian groups. I think we are the last country who follows Louis Althusser, apart, uh, I think, uh, Amherst University in the States. And uh, yes, they just uh, republished uh, Reading Capital, anyway, in Greek. Uh, and they broke from Andersia. For them, in uh, taking from Gramsci the worst aspects of Gramsci, not the strength of him, he's, they said that the main thing is the national peculiarity. You have to have a, a, politic, a policy which is nationale popolare, as Gramsci said, national and popular. And in, in this sense, uh, the, uh, we have to have a self-centered Greek economy which by returning to the drug, by taking other measures, etc., will, uh, by breaking from the Eurozone, but not necessarily from the European Union, can an open a road which later on will go to a socialist direction. We don't agree to that. Neither the comrades in Andersia agree to that. For this reason, they split as well. So that gave us a field, a common uh, territory to discuss without uh, putting any ultimatum, us or them. And in our common meetings, everybody exposed uh, uh, its uh, view. I mean, you, we marched uh, together, uh, we, you know, the, we had this united action front, but at the same time, we, we share common uh, analysis and different analysis as well. I mean, there are divergences, convergences. But at least those who remained, which is the majority of Andersia, with which we made the block, they said that we are definitely we are against economic nationalism. We are not for an isolated Greek uh, capitalist state, which step by step to involve the socialist direction. But uh, and the, the future of our victories will depend from what will happen in Europe, which is absolutely true. If Russia knew this tragedy in the 20th century of Stalinism, etc., it is not pessimism to say that Greece, small Greece, cannot have a socialism in a single uh, country and uh, living only on the basis of Feta or Uso. It is uh, something uh, that uh, we are part of. But we have also see that if you have this kind of revolutionary break in my country, this is only the beginning of the European process. Not, it will be uh, not limited. It has to be defeated in Europe as well. Because there will be, I am confident on that, things in Europe which will happen. And so the bourgeoisie in Europe have to defeat the workers in France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, why not Britain, and why not Germany. That's uh, the thing. Well, we could go on for another 10 minutes or so, but after that we must end. Um, are there any other questions? Okay.
think I'll ask. Um, I was really interested in what you said about the kind of high, kind of housing crisis, yeah. uh, which is kind of very reminiscent of 2007 and eight, which is you know precip precip precipitating a, a, a whole banking crisis. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that there's a, a strong possibility in Greece that this isn't the end of the crisis. This is just the beginning. And I wondered if you'd like to say more about that. I fully agree. I mean the whole first stage of the crisis uh, was completed, if you like, until the summer. A new one, much worse, starts. Because, to give you an example, despite the, the fact that we had very right wing and uh, really they accepted everything from the Troika governments, in the, uh, the George Papandre government, the, uh, the other government of Samaras and Venezuelos, and then the the National Unity Government, all these governments, they applied the orders of the Troika. Or to be more exact, they tried to apply them, to impose them. But they did not succeed it because of the social resistance. For example, they asked, uh, in one, I think it was the first, yes, memorandum of understanding, the, the first bailout. They asked that uh, 5 billion uh, euros worth of enterprises should be uh, privatized in Greece. Mm -hmm. Because in Greece we had, uh, still I have, a big public sector, okay? The energy, the, the airports they gave now, okay? Uh, and others have to be, the, the total uh, value, it was 5 billion. The right-wing governments, the austerity governments, despite, before Syriza, despite the attacks, the, the, the misery that I described before, they succeeded only to privatize 500 million from the 5 billion. They failed. And Schäuble was very harsh against the right-wing Samaras, who is a far right, he's not just right. Winger, very nationalist, uh, you name it, anti-Semitic, everything. Uh, they did not succeed to the previous government. Why they can't succeed with this one? And uh, not only that, Spiegel was right, the journal, describing the last uh, bailout, the, the list of the measures, as a list of horrors. Uh, terrible what they asked now. They asked far worse measures than they've taken the previous, like the houses problem and others. Which is, for the first time, they are taxing the poor farmers, in Greece you don't have big land, landlords, okay? There is, uh, we have the first uh, mobilizations. The question of the harbors are not finished. And, or the, so we'll have a lot of hardships, worse hardships than before. I mean, uh, to, as I was speaking in university, space, <laughs> and as I said before, now I'm teaching a postgraduate uh, program in the University of Athens, the National University of Athens, it is the first the public university we had mm -hmm. in the Department of um, Cultural Studies and the Film Studies. Uh, I was paid uh, just before coming here <laughs> the money for last year's uh, course and it was about 700 euros, I think 500 pounds, for a year. Mm -hmm. And paid one year later. Mm -hmm. Because they introduced flexibility relations even in the academic sphere. I mean, when a full-time professor is retired, they do not renew the position. They try that the, his work or her work is substituted by very cheap labor of proletarian academics like me and others. So there is a one just example what is the situation. This will be worse. We don't have hospitals. I mean, really, we, the hospitals are in shambles. If somebody, and they know very well the example with me, <laughs> he has, if he has cancer, he has to make chemotherapy happened in 2011 and uh, 
that the big private drug industries of the West, providing the Greek public sector, the National Health Service, with the drugs, because of the debt, they stopped giving the chemotherapy drugs. So if uh, you had the metastasis, you have to wait about four or five months until to have chemotherapy is finished, okay? If you have some money, you can go in France, for example, and do the chemotherapy. But you cannot do that. We live a, a real tragedy. And what happens in front will be worse. Uh, the biggest, the two biggest hospitals in the Athens area from the days that I left, they had a strike because they cannot do nothing. They cannot afford. This summer, it was a very hot summer in Greece. I mean, very, very hot. Horrible. You can imagine a friend of mine told me that uh, he had to make an operation, a brain operation, in uh, August, in a big, in the National uh, Hospital uh, near Piraeus. In, and he had, there was no air conditioning in the operation room, and the nurses had to put like that. And you, he's a very good surgeon, by the way. He succeeded. He made the operation to the mother of a comrade. I mean, so you, 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 we have the highest, I think, now rate of suicides. So, but the same, you have despair, but hope has been given for those who has no hope. Walter Benjamin. Okay, it's not mine. So, but we believe to that. And I fully agree it will be worse. It's not me, it's Spiegel, the, the, the journal, the German the journal who says that. It's a list of horrors. And I don't see how, they, how you can survive with so few money. We have something that I saw it in the 90s when I visited Russia. Whole families living out of the small pension of the grandfather. Everybody lives with his family. I mean, you can be 35 years old, you live with your mom and dad. And all of you living with the money of the granddad. This is the... I don't know if I reply to you, but... Uh, so it does not have other solution than revolution. So there's no, It is not that because we are romantic revolutionaries. You cannot have a gradual change in this hell. Name it a revolution, name it what you like, but what we need, we need is measures. First, but to do that, the alternative strategy needs to have a nucleus of fighters to do it. For this reason, there is an open debate and regrouping the revolution left. That is the meaning of our block with the Adasia and others. Now, in the last, it was, when I come back in Saturday, we have a meeting, a public meeting, uh, when one of the speakers and the others, the Adasia speakers, what to do from now on. Because next Tuesday, 17th of November, is the anniversary of the youth uprising of 1973 in Polytechnic University in Athens, which brought down the dictatorship in the end. But at that time, in 73, 200 students were killed by the tanks. And nobody was really punished, punished from that period. So never again. Shall we leave it at that? Stuart, nothing you want to ask? <laughs> uh, okay, well, um, Saba, Saba, as last time, I think we got a very good sense of the current situation, uh, and the drama of the current situation, uh, but also the history of Greece, um, but set within a much broader geopolitical understanding of the global structures than we normally get. So I'm very grateful to Thank you. you and it has yeah, been I'm a very important evening for me. For me too. I think you would like to join me in saluting your team. <laughs>